That was a that was a result of a dirt bike injury. Oh. Crashing on a dirt bike. Oh. What does the bike look like? The bike's in good shape. Bike survived. <laughs> is it rolling? Yeah, this this is a heck of a place. We wanted to offer to buy this place up from you. It's not for sale. Feet. Not and not for sale. Uh, you run it. That's all it was about. Not for sale. No, I was asking if the place is for sale. We'd like to buy it. I'm impressed with your your outfit. I bought a pair of clip showings and I liked them so much. Thought I'd come up here and try to buy the factory from you. <laughs> no. Well. Uh, not for sale. Have you got seven million dollars? How much? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> we can see if we can arrange it. <laughs> is that the price tag? No. no. <laughs> About 70 million, huh? <laughs> Was it for sale at one time or no? Where do you live? Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm a dentist. Oh, yeah. A dentist. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not your best friend, huh? A dentist. Well. It hurts you too much. Can you go down to the brewery club with me today? Can I? Yes. Sure. Yeah, can I get in like this? Come on, why not? For real. I room niched. Look at this. How do you like this? Uh, the two of our rotary members are dentists, diggers of decayed stumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's where I am. <laughs> DDS. One of them was past president of another club up, uh, up the uh, a little short distance, and had been also president of this present club. But that picture was taken from uh, of me. It's a train you worked on in where Chile, in South America, it's Chile, and that picture was probably taken about 1930. This is before you had designed your first clip show, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, look at this sign here. Oh, it's a little. Slunch wires. Uh, uh, get it uh, straight, huh? Approximately level. You got it? Mm hmm. We're rolling, huh? And incidentally, in Spanish, uh, my Spanish dictionary has two words in it starting with K kilogram, more, and kilometro. That diploma uh, <laughs> was given to me by my gang in Chile. See it? And I'd almost forgotten about it, and it showed up in a trunk, so I pointed on the wall. <coughs> I, uh, spelled with a K, it was spelled with a C. Can you tell us the significance of the uh, of your license plate, Gadfly? I want to know the the story on that. That's that's been your name, your nickname for a long time. Oh, back in the fifties, I guess it would have been. I was writing occasional. Uh, uh, Short articles and uh, dope from hope in the magazines published, uh, uh, and uh, one of the editors referred to me as uh, Clips is somewhat of a somewhat of a gadfly, and I said, "Well, why not just use it?" <laughs> <laughs> I've got. I just uh, ordered a personalized license plate for my car. It's got. It's going to have clips on it. I thought it was going to be here by the time I came here, but it's going to. It's going to be probably a week or so before it's done. So hmm. I have the. When I went in to get it, you know, they. The lady says, "Here, you need to fill out this little form." I filled out the form, and she says, uh, "Is there any particular plate you want to check on?" I said, "Yeah, I want the, the plate to say clips." So she typed it into her computer. She says, "There's no clips plate in the state of Louisiana, so you'll have the only one." I said, "Well, good." So. Uh. I have one from California. I saw the picture of it in the magazine. Uh, in front of my house, it's a, it's on a railroad switch stand. Go, no go. Was that uh, that was a plate for one of your cars? It was a plate that one of my. I don't know whether he was a dealer or a rep representative. Uh -huh. I had it, and he gave it to me a number of years ago. How we know? So I nailed it to my switch stand. <laughs> I saw the picture of you standing next to it in the American Way. Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That Jenny Jenny sent me a uh, a copy of that. A friend of mine was in an airplane. He got that that one. Yeah, you got a heck of a place here. It's not for sale though, huh? Mm -mm. 
Um, well, we've got about a half an hour. How can you? How much time can you waste? I can waste as much up here. I can waste as much time as I want. This is I like this place. I'm, in, I'm impressed. You are my hero. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have any bullshit buttons up here. <laughs> we have some already. We, we got some about eight years ago, nine years ago, we passed through here and got some. Didn't have the opportunity to meet you, though. T tell me the significance of this here. You, uh, you that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, Oh, I have a photographic memory, but it never developed. Rudy Bozak. Rudy Bozak. He was one of our competitors uh, a number of years ago. And I was invited to one of our dealerships in Dayton, Ohio, for an open house, and much to my chagrin and disgust and whatnot, I found that uh, there were some other, some other principals there, uh, men from McIntosh and one from somewhere and somewhere, and uh, Rudy Bozak. Well, Bozak and I were trading quips, dirty cracks at each other, and uh, my host, uh, uh, I'll remember his name in a minute. Went out and bought us two hatchets and a photographer. <laughs> Y'all fixing to thrash one another, huh? <laughs> and they were sharp. They were bloody sharp. We had to be very careful to, uh, in our waving them around and not not to hurt one another. Not let, let, to hurt, hurt, hurt ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you about. Uh, I read as much as I can possibly read about audio, and I've read everything that that you've written that I could get my hands on and I haven't really heard you write too much concerning these uh, the, the inefficient panel you know the electrostatic speakers and all what it, I know what you're gonna say that you're gonna hand me one of your little pins bullshit pins if you had one but I'm just curious to uh, to know how much time you've spent fooling with those things because I don't I don't like them personally myself I just wanted to know what your feelings were concerning those speakers the magna plan magna Pans and the, uh, well, the magna pan or magna planer or whatever it is is, a, is not an electrostatic. It's a it's an electromagnetic speaker in which you've got little uh, uh, voice not coils but uh, um, zigzag zigzag windings on the panel and they mesh with the magnet in another panel and uh, that makes the uh, uh, electricity going through the coil make the uh, the panel move. The diaphragm is usually a rectangular diaphragm of maybe uh, two by five feet or something like that. Uh -huh. Well, it's uh, because of its low efficiency, you just dislike well, it. Well, it's just low efficiency. Yeah. And the thing is that <clears throat> my experience has dictated to me that. Try to be as efficient. A, severe, a, 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 a significant form of distortion is inversely proportional to efficiency. Yeah, I've read that. I, and I tell, see, I'm back home. I argue with these guys. I go in and listen to the speakers and places that handle the clip shoes. I own a pair of clip horns, but when I go into these things and I try to, uh, I quiz these fellows, you know, to see how sharp these salesmen are. And some, some of them are sharp, and they agree that the Klipsch horn is the best speaker out there. And there's other guys that go against it and say, well, you know, because of the horn loading. It's 30 years old or 40 years old. Right, or right. Or other, yeah, it's prehistoric. No, and it's, uh, uh, no improvements in the last 60 years right, or 70 or 100. Right. Uh, they, they come out with all of this garbage, and, they, and then they talk up how good these panel speakers are and these uh, the, the low efficiency speakers. And, that, and guys have the, uh, the uh, I don't know what, what to call it, audacity. I guess to say that you by decreasing the efficiency you gain sound quality. I don't <laughs> understand that. Just exactly the opposite. <laughs> uh, They're way off. Huh? Uh, one of my uh, better papers. The ultimate LSH loudspeaker. Yep. Yeah, I've got. I bought this from. Mm -hmm. I got. I called Jenny up at the front and I ordered your, your audio papers. That's my favorite. That's the one I hand to them. That's a great one. <laughs> you got old Gabe March 74. March 74. 
before. Gee whiz. I had a uh, delay. Here we are. Robert Carver. Now these, uh, this is all tongue in cheek. Uh -huh. But the references are all uh, legitimate. Yeah. 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 He stated back in audio in '71 or something that whenever a loudspeaker engineer makes an attempt to extend or smooth the frequency response of his design or lower the distortion, the law of physics demand that the loudspeaker become ever less efficient. That's ridiculous. And dang it all, uh, all the numbers dictate that uh, otherwise. They, uh, they're in approximately inversely proportional. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm not going to try to translate these logarithms into uh, ordinary ratios, but I made a direct radiator in a box which could be attached to a horn. And without the horn, the uh, uh, Output level at one watt was about, uh, oh shucks, minuscule. Well, and going from a direct radio to a horn, we improved the efficiency by 15 decibels. 16 decibels would be about 40 to 1. and decrease the distortion by 25 decibels. So, uh, uh, nothing but good. The, uh, well, I ought to sit down and get my slide rule out <laughs> and calculate what the, what that ratio is. Well, hell, it's 10 decibels. Back when you were uh, actively doing a lot of the the work out here and and, re and uh, what do you call it uh, testing other speakers and all, did you did you have the opportunity to test some of these inefficient panels and see how uh, weak they were in the bass response and all? Uh, no, I've never uh, never fooled. Uh, yes, I have. I've had electrostatic speakers in the old lab across the street where the museum is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that museum, we went through there this morning shooting some, the last time I was up here we went through and I didn't have a video camera and I do, we just took still photos. I have a pair of short horns also that uh, I bought from a lady. $300 for the pair. She wanted 500 I talked her down to three and then I had them. They were, they were raw though. They ain't worth it. <laughs> they ain't worth 300 <laughs> They have your name on them, though, so that makes you Well, uh, I wish they didn't because I'm ashamed. Uh, what was the theory on the big slot uh, uh, along the back of it back there? Was that for, for, for the back wave of the, of the cone to exert air, move air out of that slot and along the walls similar to the clip showing or what? It was sort of a uh, perverted uh, base reflex principle. <laughs> perverted. Uh, and uh, it was uh, an economic answer to electro voices. I've forgotten what their model was. Anyway. It had a response, a two-hump camel response, a two-hump camelback response, and uh, we managed to smooth it up by making a legitimate base reflex out of it. And from that, I learned that uh, did away with that the term base reflex is in the uh, in the public domain. <coughs> 
That was a mistake on uh, the part. Of the guys that produced it, Jensen. <laughs> uh, Jensen should have copyright, actually trademarked it. Uh, you know they have uh, some some fellows up in uh, Utah right now, I believe that make that still manufacture. I think they still do the imitation clip horn, which you write about in your uh, audio papers. You know about imitation clip horns, but they have uh, taken the top section instead of having a big mid-range horn. They have a seven-inch mid-range cone driver, and then a, and then a, some other type of. How, how are those guys able to do that? Because the patent is, is run out or something, or well, uh, it looks the, just like the Clipshorn. It's uh, the trade. The name Clipshorn is trademarked. Uh, they can make it, but they can't call it that. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, I stopped an outfit in Seattle from using the word clipshorn in advertising it. It was a new and improved clipshorn. Right. Well, I bought one. <laughs> and its response, well, hell, it goes down to about 70 hertz. A good honest 70 hertz. That's Mine it. Mine goes down to 35, an octave lower. Uh -huh. And uh, their mid-range goes out farther than their tweeter does. <laughs> that's, that's impressive, huh? <laughs> and it was an awful lumpy response. You see? Did you see? Is the, can you see out the window out there? It's mm -hmm. PWK. Yeah, I like your uh, your parking space out there. They painted your your logo on the uh, concrete. That's nice. That's about my only perk. What is? My parking place. I have you, two two private parking places. One down front. One out. Where uh, you are now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when I came in this morning, I came inside. I had some some caps. If you'd like a cap, I have one in the car for you with this on it. Uh, and I, I gave one to Jenny and to, uh, who's the gal, Rhonda, maybe, that answers the phone up there. I, I was going out to get them a cap when you passed by. Because every other time, the two other times I was up here at the factory, you weren't around. I was hoping that I could get to meet you. And mm -hmm. Today I was lucky. Uh, one way of uh, assuring yourself is to make an appointment. Yeah, well, I I never I didn't have the guts to call up here and ask for you. You know, I said, well, uh, he's probably a busy man. Doesn't doesn't have time to fool with a yo-yo like me. Has has some of these guys come offered you uh, big money though to try to buy this place out? Well, I've had several offers. Just decided. And no. there's one pending right now. Really? Yeah. Not sure, you're not quite sure you want to let loose of this place yet, huh? Well, I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> uh oh. I let more out of the. Uh, I let more. Out than you should. I got out of the cat then than I, than I intended to, to say it's, it's pending. Yeah. Uh oh. Well. Don't quote me. I won't. <laughs> I'm not going to. This is just for me. This is just. so. You didn't hear it. 50 no. years. That's right. The camera didn't either. <laughs> That's so 50 years from now, I can show everybody that the day, what is it, the 29th of June, when I came in and met Paul Klipsch, my hero. I wish I'd have had my plate with me so I could have gotten you to to, to sign, uh, autograph the back of it or something. You know? The plate? My uh, license plate for my car that's coming Ooh. in. Maybe what I'll, I'll do that on the next trip. Maybe I'll unbolt. You're from Lafayette. Lafayette, Louisiana, yes, sir. Do you have a dentist up here in Hope? Do I have dentists? A here? dentist. Oh, nice. Yeah, you go to several? Uh, no, only one. He's a fellow Rotarian. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember. Broussard. Broussard? I don't know where he's from, but somewhere near Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah, Broussard is a little town right outside. Uh, the man's name is Broussard, oh. as I recall it. And he was a customer of ours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, he was a, a real, honest to goodness, died in the wheel, uh, uh, Cajun. <laughs> Are you Cajun? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I guess you would consider us that. We were born and raised down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess you'd call us a Cajun. We eat all that hot food, seasoned food. Have you tried some of that? Oh, yeah. 